Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is vlog 18 and I'm going to show you the recovery of all the tomato and pepper plants. Well, tomatoes did well, peppers not so good, but I replaced a lot. I'm going to give you a whole tour of the garden, show you what I've been doing. Um, I want to start over here at my no-dig garden. I did a whole video on how you set this up and now I've really over planted it to really put it to the test and so far so good. I have growing in there right now um, that'll come to artichoke. Artichoke, radishes, onions, leeks, tomatoes, mustard greens, potatoes, a lot of stuff. And I just want to see how well it does. Next year I'll do maybe more with it or towards the end of the season. I want to show you two tomato plants that were really damaged about two weeks ago from that frost. Um, and now they have tons of holes in it, so I think I have flea beetles around. I'll be taking care of that with an insect dust. You can use any kind. Um, I like to use Captain Jack's. It's an organic dust. This whole stem was frozen out and it has recovered nicely. A nice root system. I gave it the chemical fertilizers, which some people freaked out on. Chemical fertilizers, I'll say it again, are not poisonous. They don't harm you. They don't harm the plants. And they're not going to harm the soil with one or two dosings at all. Now I go back to my organic ways, fish emulsion. But if you have a, cat a catastrophe, basically, or a catastrophic issue, the chemical fertilizers can help get things back on track. And back on track is all I'm shooting for if I use the chemical types once or twice a year. It's not going to hurt anything. This is where people usually sign off. That's okay. This is a teaching channel, and I just want to be clear. Organic is wonderful. Compost is better. Chemical fertilizers aren't going to harm you. I can already tell, like some of the areas, the radishes are looking a little bit yellow. So they're going to need, even though this was planted into compost, maybe some fish emulsion, maybe the compost wasn't fully broken down. But what happens with the no dig garden is they dry out pretty quickly. So maybe that was part of the issue too. So when you're first getting them established, make sure you keep the watering up. Things are growing well in there. Look how nice those tomatoes are doing. Fish emulsion, doing really well. They were protected because they were in a cold frame. That's what all my tomatoes should look like now, but they're kind of knocked back a little bit. But I was happy with how they came back. Having an issue in here with something I never had before, but this is all planted with shredded hardwood. So when I looked closely, there's like these little flies and there's probably some sort of issue going on where they're eating the roots of the plants. I'm going to give this a neem oil drench about two or three tablespoons of neem oil in a gallon of water with some soap and I'm going to try and soak them out. But this is a little bit of a fail, but that's okay. Learn something. Using, you know, the shredded hardwood, I think that setup makes it easier for some root flies or root maggots or whatever you might call them to get into the garden. I apologize, I haven't gotten to this part yet of setting it up with a tomato plant, rabbit protection and deer protection. I will get to that soon. Coming into the garden, things are really exploding. Flowers are starting to show. Highly recommend growing flowers in your garden. Right over there are columbines. There's purple cone flower and those are white daisies in there. You want to bring in pollinators. You know, you want to bring in good insects. Flowers will do that. Here's another plant that was beat up, coming back nicely. Peas are taking off. I should be getting peas shortly. The broccoli in here is probably my best ever. Not huge heads, but it looks like they're about to bolt, so I'm going to cut them a little bit early. And every year I struggle with broccoli. Not so bad. This is probably the largest head I've been able to get, and I really started those early. Carrots right over there. Beets in the front. Dwarf peas. Tons of cilantro. This bed will be cleared out in a little bit. Mustard greens, collard greens, they were just extra plants. I'll be eating all of those leaves soon. Potatoes were damaged um, and they've taken off too. I think I may have showed them real quick. But as soon as the warm weather comes, as soon as they're fed, uh, they're going to be okay. They're going to take off. As long as potatoes don't die out down at the potato level, they're going to come back strong. And that's what it looked like. All this new growth has come out. Starting to get holes. There's a specific insect that comes to potatoes. Have to keep an eye out for that. Fish emulsion I was talking about. That's a gallon. It's about 22 bucks, but it's the cheapest way to buy it. So one way to save money is to buy in bulk, buy a little bit larger than you might need. The weeds are starting to take off. I don't need to get in 
and remove all the roots. If you keep just kind of plucking the leaves off, eventually the plant runs out of energy, but this is all going to get mulched up. So one of my goals is to get all the mulch down. If you come in here, you can see this is kale that's totally flowered. It's bringing in pollinators. I'm going to set out seed uh, pods. That red lettuce was planted as seed weeks and weeks and weeks, if not months ago. And it's getting to size now. A lot of people say, well, why do you start seeds indoors? Well, as we get down further in the garden, I'll show you the lettuce transplants that I put out and how big they are. And in fact, I've been eating them. All the radishes are gone out of here. Arugula that's starting to flower. This is all going to be cleared out and probably planted with some tomatoes. Sunflowers are popping up everywhere from the sunflowers I had last year. And I don't have the heart to really get rid of all of them. So wherever they're kind of in a place, they're not going to really bother things. I'm going to let them go. All the greens taking off. Now is the time, and maybe, let me pause here. Now is the time to start your preventative or preventive spraying. So if you're using neem oil for the cabbage worm, cabbage looper, start spraying now. I've already given these a dose. I found some on this plant. You just start looking for holes like that. I also bought um, a BT dust. I think it's called Dipple. I'm not sure. I'll have to go look. But I'm going to use that dust on there. That's organic too. And sometimes it's a little bit easier to put the dust down than it is to mix the spray. But I'll be taking care of this every 7 to 10 days to really not let the cabbage worm take over and shred this all down. I really like how it's growing. In fact, I'll be having greens for dinner. Cabbages are taking off. You can see the frost damage on the lower leaves. The upper leaves are looking good. These are all being taken care of with uh, manures and fish emulsion. Here's some tomatoes that are coming back slowly but surely. Not sure if that one will make it or not. Really nice growth on that. Lost a couple in here and you can tell you know after 14 days you know maybe your tomato looks like that you know it's probably best to remove it. A couple died off but they're coming back. I put more in but I'm really happy with how the garden's starting to take off. And this is what's going to happen when the soil warms up. Air temperature is one thing, but when your temperature gets 50, 60 degrees, everything just starts thriving and starts growing. Tomato plants in here, some of them have been replaced. Some of them were taken care of in the way that I told you. And you can check out um, my video. I just did a whole video on kind of emergency care for frost damaged plants. The kales in every other container are doing really well. The peppers are coming back in places. They come back much more slowly than tomatoes and they come back as if you almost prune them. Look at all the side growth growing. Though damaged, it's all got, got to, yeah, it's all going to come back really strong. And you just have to be patient. In there was pretty fresh, I've talked about that before, shredded hardwood. They didn't get the uh, insects that the onions got. Um, but they're growing slowly and I don't think that was fully composted down. So I'll be pulling that out, growing something in there. Maybe a um, Hubbard squash or something like that along the fence. Through my asparagus you can see really nice kohlrabi. I think that's Conan really nice and big. I highly recommend kohlrabi if you've never tried it. You can eat the leaves and it gets this great bulb at the bottom that you just you just pick and lightly peel the, yeah, the kohlrabi and it's delicious. Really sweet. You eat it like an apple and you want it to get about baseball size. Those are almost to size but not quite yet. Here's some more broccoli that it's a different variety and it quickly went to flower. I'll still eat the tips. No issue down there and you can even eat the flowers. So your cool weather crops start the flower, not so much when the temperature gets warm, but when the soil gets warm. More related to the roots, but when the soil gets 50, 60 degrees, sends a signal, the plants basically send out flower stalks like that mustard green. And their whole goal is to flower and produce seed. So I'll be eating this green cabbage or a Chinese cabbage right down there. Plenty of wonderful greens this year. It all did really, really well. Beets, they're getting to size to the point where if you have rabbits, you can lay chicken wire over your plants that are starting to come up. Um, that's a different kind of wire, works the same way. Rabbits won't crawl on that and 
chew your plants down and then when the plants get to about that size I don't want them growing all through that so I just remove it and it's less likely a rabbit's going to come through here and eat all that down. They tend to like the uh, more tender plants. A zucchini, it's going to be my early zucchini. One of the strategies I mentioned before is to have a lot of backups of zucchini, cucumbers because diseases and pests tend to take them but the young plants seem to do well. So what do I mean by that? As that zucchini dies out gets the vine borer, I'll be putting in a new one. Eventually you get plants in the ground when the vine borer life cycle is done and then it'll keep growing really nicely until you know later in the fall to when the frost comes. So you don't have to just quit because your first wave of squash or zucchini or whatever dies or gets a disease, just replace it. Try and save it but if not replace it. Recovery of a tomato plant there and I said, you know, this is the first year I have all kinds of holes in my tomato plants. Don't typically get that. Again, I think it's um, some sort of chewing beetle or something like that. Just got the mulch down for there. That's what I'll be doing for most of my garden. It's getting all the mulch down. I'll either be using grass uh, with compost or I'll be using shredded hardwood with compost. This is the area where I'm growing the cherry tomatoes. Four on that side. I think I've already talked about that. And I have five on this side, but the yellow pear isn't doing well. In fact, it died off, so I'm going to remove it. But I'm actually tossing the yellow pear out of my plants that I grow. Every year it gets early blight really badly, even with spraying. Other tomatoes survive. So I do recommend that. You know, try out new plants. If they don't do well for a season, get rid of them. If they don't do well for a second season, certainly don't plant them anymore. The pepper plants, like I was showing you, starting to do a lot of side shooting, which is great. Some of these I replaced. Wherever I have a marker laying on the ground, that's a plant that died and I don't have a replacement for. And you can see this was some early uh, Cornito Gallios that I grew back in maybe January and I was hoping to get tons of early peppers. Well, the frost took care of that. But again, they're coming back strong. So even though you do get some loss, don't panic. Feed them a fertilizer. If you don't want to use the chemicals, I understand. I just don't want you to think they're poisonous. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. Give them a nice big dose of fish emulsion or an organic fertilizer with lots of nitrogen. Here's a tomato plant that I buried and that will grow roots out there. But you can see it's sending up new shoots right there. These will take over as the main growth of the plant and every, every you know, the plant's going to be happy. I think this will be a nice happy section of tomatoes and I'm going to get this nice cherry tomato trellis. Flowers all over again. I highly recommend growing them. Clematis vines, dianthus. Here we are in my fruit section. Blackberries are starting to flower. Now, what I'll be looking for this year, and there's tons of blueberries. Blueberries, I think I mentioned before. You have early bearing, middle season bearing, late bearing blueberries. Mix them up this way. You get blueberries longer throughout the season. You're going to see how much uh, the birds really take from this. If they do, then I'm going to have to build some sort of structure over this area. But we'll see what happens. Just spent time lifting up my hops vines because they were crawling all the way out here. And hops, hop vines usually grow up like a 20-foot pole, which I didn't do, obviously. I wanted to create a wall of hops. However, they're doing so well, next year I'm going to have to figure out a solution because they're really taking over everything. But my local, uh, my friends that are local, the uh, brew beer will have tons of hops for their brewing. Brewing, yeah. What is that? Brew? <laughs> brewing. 10-gallon... Um, pots that I sell, growing peas in there. They did get a little beat up from the frost, but they're all growing in shredded hardwood. And I'm still sort of mastering that. Again, shredded hardwood's really best left to sit a good six months to break down and be ready to plant into it. This one was rushed, and they're not quite as big as I want them to be. Um, but they're flowering. They're doing okay. I'm going to get lots of peas. These will actually be turned over to uh, determinate type tomatoes, maybe some peppers as the season progresses. Here's the area that I do a lot of containers. 
beautiful columbines, tons of flowers, let them come in. Going to be doing a video on refreshing that green stock tower, which I'm affiliated with, and you can find that in the description. That will be all planted up with peppers. I'll divide up the herbs, and there'll be peppers and herbs in there. Here is the tomatoes I said earlier. You know, I started some from seed, but until your earth really warms up, plants from seeds are going to grow slowly. These were all grown inside to transplant size and brought out here, already established, and I've been eating them. You know, you can see that I've done the cut and come again style for a lot of these. But you use transplants, you start indoors or you start outside and you bring your plants at night so that you get much larger plants at the same point. For instance, these are my second wave of transplants that I did, all growing really, really well. All right, let's spin around and go out to my seedlings that are growing and then we'll wrap up there. You know their area where the peppers got a little bit beat up, tomatoes got beat up, but they're starting to come back. Nice green color, but now today it's raining. It's actually a little bit humid. 65 degree rains for a couple of days, warms up the soil, everything's gonna take off. So I'll be getting my cucumbers out, more squash, more zucchini, and you can see that I started them in cups. Same reason, these were moved in and out till they broke the surface and now they're doing extremely well. That'll be a nice little jump to getting them into the ground because I actually have some plants, some seeds out there of beans. Here are beans that I grew in a cup, they're huge. The beans that I started from seed out there are only about this tall and a lot of them haven't come up yet. So cups are a great way to get started to get them started early. All the damaged tomatoes are really green and healthy. I'll be giving these away to friends. So things do recover in the garden. If something happened, don't panic. Do your best. See what you can learn. Um, plants are really resilient. They're going to come back. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And thanks so much for being part of my garden world. I really, really enjoy it, and I love making all these videos. Thanks for watching.